On the left side we have Autogen by Microsoft with over 25,000 stars on GitHub. And on the right side we have the new kid on the block with over 12,000 stars on GitHub, Kureai. Today we're gonna see which framework knocks the other one out based on how fitting it is for your application. So without further ado, let's get started. Now since you're here, there's a couple of things that you can do to support this channel and my work. First, give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, make sure to check out my blog, gettingstarted.ai. I'm going to leave a link in the description so that you can get access to all of the code that you see on this channel once you create your free membership. Okay, let's go back to the fight. I'm going to start with the similarities, what both frameworks can do. Then after, I'm going to share with you what I think is good about each one. So both frameworks are written in Python, meaning you're going to need to know some Python to work with the frameworks. Also, they're both designed to create AI agents. Now, if you don't know what agents are, I'm going to leave a link in the description for another video that goes over the basics of what agents are and how they talk to each other. So make sure to check it out. Both frameworks support multi-agent conversations, which means you can have one or more agents doing the work for you. Both of them integrate with local large language models, meaning you don't need to integrate with OpenAI or Gemini. You could use a local LLM like Llama 3, for example. Both frameworks allow for human input during execution. So if one of the agents requires your input for a specific decision or for some help, you can implement that and then you could provide the feedback that it needs. Finally, both frameworks use tools or functions to complete tasks. And if we take a quick look at this diagram here, we can see that the request first comes in. So let's say we want to send an email to Jamie and then this request goes to the agent. The agent will check, do I have a tool that can send an email or do I need to generate one? And then if it has the tool, it's just going to use it to send the email. So the tool is send email, which is just a Python function. And then if it doesn't have the tool, it's going to check whether uh, the agent has access to a large language model and it's going to request from the large language model to generate the code to send an email and then it's going to proceed with that. Okay. Autogen. Out of the two, this one came out first, so we're going to start with it. One of the most important features of Autogen is its ability to execute code in a Docker container. Now, you may think that it's not critical, but it's extremely important when you're dealing with LLM generated code that is running on your machine. Since execution is containerized, no harm is done to the environment. There are four main workflows that Autogen agents use to communicate with one another. First, we have the simplest pattern, which involves two agents called two agent chat. Usually a user proxy agent and an assistant agent are working together to solve a problem. Now I have a video about this and I'm going to share the link in the description. So check it out if you want to know more how the two agent chat works within Autogen as it is the most popular. And I think it works for most cases that I've seen so far. Now, next we have the sequential chat makes sense when you have tasks that need to be completed one after the other. For example, suppose that you need to scrape the contents of a web page. So that's task number one. And then you need to summarize the content, task number two, and finally send it by email, task number three. So this is a sequential linear order. And that's where the sequential chat pattern makes sense the most. Next, we have the group chat. And this pattern involves a bunch of agents, usually more than two that are working together, managed by a special agent called group chat manager, which coordinates when and which agent handles a message. Now the group chat manager is customizable and it's supports a bunch of strategies like auto, manual, random, and round robin. I'm going to include a link to the docs so you can read more about this topic. Finally, we have nested chat. This workflow includes two or more agents that initiate a side conversation and then its summary is sent back to the conversation initiator. Kind of like when you order food for delivery, you are the initiator in this case, and then the restaurant and the driver kick off a side conversation without you, but then you'll get the summary of the conversation that the order is ready to be delivered and the driver is on their way. Does it make sense? Let me know in the comments. All right. Crew AI, the new kid on the block. It's gaining popularity and it's the main competitor to Autogen for creating multi-agent or agentic applications. Now there are two nice features that I like about it. First one is expected output, which specifies how a task should look like when it's done. For example, if you want a summary of a long text in bullet points, you can simply specify this to the task when creating it. Second, task delegation. 
so you can program agents in Crew AI to delegate tasks to other agents and that's a cool feature because it enables natural collaboration between your agents. All right, there's a little bit of a difference between how Crew AI and Autogen use tools. Basically, in Autogen, we have Python functions, which are the tools that give our agents extra capabilities like sending an email. Now in Crew AI, we have the same thing, which is called custom tools because we are defining these functions. But we also have some built-in tools, things like website search tool, which lets you search the contents of a website, for example, that's built in. Also, since Crew AI is built on top of Langchain, you're going to get access to all of the Langchain tools right out of the box. So that's something extra. All right, just like we did with Autogen, let's take a look at how agents in Crew AI communicate with each other. First, we have two supported patterns. The first one is sequential, and this basically means that tasks must run in a linear order. So task number one, task number two, task number number three, just like we've seen before, those should run one after the other. And this is exactly like the sequential chat pattern that we've seen with Autogen before. Now, the next one is hierarchical. This pattern is a bit more advanced than the sequential one where you have a bunch of agents that need to talk to each other to solve a problem, but you have a manager that kind of orchestrates the communication between these agents, delegating tasks and validating outputs. So it kind of manages the conversation. Now, this is also very similar to the group chat pattern that we've seen with Autogen. So we're done. And the question is, what should you choose? Which framework? Is it Crew AI or is it Autogen? Now, personally, I found it easier to understand how things are structured when I was fiddling around with Crew AI. That's because of how tasks are split from agents. Now, I'm not saying that Autogen is complicated, but it just felt more organized somehow. I also like the task delegation feature and the fact that it's built on top of Langchain, so you get all the goodies from the Langchain community. Now, on the other hand, Autogen's containerized code execution capability is a top feature when your agents need to run LLM generated code. It's definitely a winner in terms of safety since it completely isolates any potential harmful code from destroying your environment. I also think that Autogen's feedback cycle, that's when one agent is having an issue, whether it's executing code or something else, and another agent is helping find a solution, is an excellent problem solving capability. It gives the agents autonomy and forces them to figure out a solution. In comparison, Crew AI agents were more guided by specific tasks. But the choice is yours. So which framework will you choose? I'd love to know in the comments. You know what I'm going to say now. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.